First Chronicles 14 and 1. When you're there, say, I'm there. Now hear him, the king of Tyre, sent messages to David and timber of cedars with masons and carpenters to build him a house. I'm not going to make it through this. Lift your hands and say, build it anyway. You are in a building season. Oh, I can't hear. You are in a building season. And, 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 and when you're getting ready to build, things are not always as clear as what they need to be. You're getting ready to build a family, a career, a portfolio, a future. You're busy building. Now, there are people around you that will be bitter, but you will be building. Lift your hands and repeat. Say, I'm not bitter. I'm building. Open your mouth and say, I'm not bitter. I'm building. You will build. It's waxing on me. You will build, Noel. The young will build. The old will build. Prophetess Katie, the Lord showed me the women are going to build. For all 20 of you that receive that, a wise woman builds. Ah. Lift your hands and say, wise women win. Come on. You will build. You will build. You will build. You will build. And David perceived, look at number two. I'm definitely not going to make it through this, Pastor Josh, because there's a smoke coming in here. And I'm about to grab your head. David perceived, perceived, look at me, it matters how you see your season. You have to see your season the right way. Chevelle, there will be people that convince you out of your season. Nyla, hi beautiful. Peter had well intentions, Evan. He loved Jesus. He didn't see his season. And when he didn't see a season, who got involved? Satan. And even though Jesus loved him, he had to look at him and say, you are an offense to me. Get behind me. Lift your hands. Say, hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more. You've got to see your season well. But I'm not going to make it. You've got to see your season well. If you despise your season, you abort your favor. The secret to the favor of God is saying yes to the season. Saying yes to the season will reveal the reason. If you don't understand what God is doing, look around you. If it looks like chaos, it's because clarity is coming. If it's noisy, it's because he wants to talk to you in the still small voice. See the season well. Don't always, can I walk through this, Jamila? Don't always expect support when you're in a different season. Some of you are suffering, Robert, from addiction to support. Now, you can't move unless you hear the applause. And you can't obey unless they agree. But I want somebody that's moving forward anyway to say, I'm still building. Mm. Verse 3 is where I get irritated. I'm kind of glad we did shout because I don't want to preach this. I'm just obeying God. Lance. <laughs> Hi, man. I'm obeying God. Look at verse 3. Prophetess Moikali, can you pray this over me? I trust you to do it. David took more wives. You know, here's a problem. Pastor Janice, I'm married to one woman almost 20 years. I don't understand why anybody in their right mind. Why would you want two? Why would you want three? Why would you want four? Unless it was your intent to reproduce. Unless you had made a decision to establish a story by legacy, by covenant. Can I stay in my office? 
All Nations Worship Assembly of Chicago is about to confront a covenant-breaking spirit. I know. You truce breakers, wicked, abandoning oaths, vows, and covenants before God. God's going to deal with the men that won't marry. You might as well receive it because I'm not changing. He's going to deal with spiritual adultery. And those of you that make commitments in emotion, and then when you sober up and find your logic and your intelligence, you decide you no longer want the rigor of covenant. Covenant is difficult. Scream yes. Covenant is complex. Scream yes. Covenant is inconvenient. And when you want convenience, the thing that makes sense to you, you'll never see the purpose of God. I have a bad word for you, Pastor Josh. What the Lord is doing next won't make sense. You won't have confirmation. You won't have validation. You may not even have appreciation. You will have the direction of the Lord concerning your next season. Let it be so in your life that the degree program you opted out of, you get back in. That, that, that your efforts with your credit, you start working on it again. And that your boundaries and all of the things you put around you from a parameter standpoint to protect your productivity, to protect your peace, say no some more. Change your number. Cut off that jealous friend. Have the courage to separate from that abusive spouse. Move on with your life. You're in a building season, and you've got to protect what God has given you. Say, I receive. Let's sojourn to verse 8 real quick. Because I promise you I want to prophesy I'm not going to make it. Verse 8. And when the Philistines heard, listen, they are looking. They're looking, Prophet Reeves. They're looking, Darrell. They acting like they not. But they watching. Mad and watching. Bitter and watching offended and watching at another church and watching <laughs> and when the Philistines heard that David lift your hands and say was anointed can I walk this through you will not be anointed once Trav you should have given me my lapel my inner creflo is coming out grace to you, sir. You will be anointed several times. The season determines the oil on your head. Part of what that means is that over the next six months, some sons will step up, others will step out. But there will be an oil upon your head for the purposes of God concerning you. Scream, teach. teach. Don't pursue the purpose without the oil. Don't say yes to the role without the oil. Don't accept the responsibility without the flow upon your head. Do you know it's dangerous to work outside of the anointing? Do you realize it's awful to commit to a task without the ability of the Holy Spirit to do you? Lift your hands and say, it's on my head. I didn't say it's in your head, it's on your head. A part of what that means is that there is an anointing. Come on through here that will not agree with, comply with, walk in tandem with what you got planned for your life. My assignment this month, Tito, is very simple. Monica, you're beautiful, baby. God's going to ruin your plans. <laughs> Elder Jasmine, you hear that dollar store clap? <laughs> the saints just gave me all these, and I'm fine with it. I'm resolved. I hate to be the bearer of bad news and the prophet of doom, but the Lord has made requirement of what you got planned for your life. 
He's made requirement of what you think your money should do. He's made requirement of what you want in a mate. He's made requirement of what you want to do with your career. He's made requirement of where you're going to go, how fast you're going to do it, and where you'll land. Can I give you a victorious word? If you trust him, <laughs> you'll always land on your feet. It will be scary. You'll have nervous attacks. You'll struggle with your breathing. You won't know who to trust, Robert. People will say things to you that you want to believe, but you'll land on your feet. Those that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. You will be, lift your hands if you receive it, unmovable, unshakable, always abounding. This is the least amount of money you'll ever have. This is the lowest credit score you'll ever have. This is the smallest house you'll ever live in. It's only up from here. Throw them hands up and say, so be it. Corey, oh, it's up from here. It's up from here. Your worst days are not behind you. Shut up, devil. There's still a plan. And his plan is to prosper me, to lift me, to raise me. But I've got to do something. There's a scripture. I'm going to walk this through like we're at Starbucks. In the book of Proverbs, that says there are several things that are never full. Jordan, hear me. One of them is the grave. It's never full. But the other is the leech. Oh, I'm going to stay in my office. When you move levels, you've got to confront the leech. The leech is at the level. Jalen, you'll know when you've gone to a new level when the leeches reveal themselves. It will be that they will attach themselves to you for their security and not your prosperity. They, they, they will only care that you make it if it guarantees that they will too. Lift your hands and say, deliver me from the leech. The, the, the leech, Elder BJ, don't look like a leech. Evan, you're amazing. I should have learned you first. <laughs> Leeches say, I love you. Leeches say, I need you. Pastor Josh, they exist off the energy of the host. You have to be hospitable to have a leech on you. You've got to be kind. I'm working in here to have a leech on you. Mean people don't have leeches, Gerald. When you're a jerk, leeches are like, I ain't even going that way. But when you're nice, talk to me. When you love, talk to me. When you forgive, open up. When you are resilient, the leeches will find you at every level. Elder Deborah, I wish I could tell you that the leeches will be gone forever. Get a raise on your job. Get a promotion in your life. Get married. <laughs> and the leeches will reveal themselves. But the Lord will never leave you to a leech. He will reveal it because he loves you. And here's the problem. God will show you stuff at the expense of your own pain. What he's about to show you may hurt. What he's about to reveal may cost you. But the Lord would rather lift you up than leave you at the hands of a leech. Lift your hands. I command the Spirit of God to expose every leech in your life. Your romantic leeches your supervisor leeches, your manager leeches, your best friend leeches, your roommate leeches, your mama leeches, your daddy leeches, your sister leeches, your, your high school leeches, your frat leeches, your sorority leeches, your grandchildren leeches, your great-grandchildren leeches, your leeches are leaving your life. Monica, if they said amen harder, I would leave it alone. But because they didn't, I'm going to go harder. What do you do when you love your leech? Mm. 
What do you do when you don't know life without a leech? Do you need to be needed? Is there something in you that's fulfilled by people's need of you? Or are you okay with moving forward without something sucking the life out of you? Maybe, 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 maybe the issue is not your sleep. Maybe the issue is not your water. Maybe the issue is not Vegas or Miami to the glory of God. Maybe you drain because of who's around you. Maybe you can't regulate your rest because of who you continually give to. And maybe you need to have a hard decision. Ask me why. You got four months before 2022. We still trying to recover from the rapture. Because we all got left behind, Onika. The white walkers were running the earth. Zombies are everywhere. Four months. Four months. Arian, your word was so powerfully accurate today. And I prophesy every desire of your heart, everything you've asked of God, will be given to you without complication. And it will be said of you that it's no longer hard to be blessed. Tell your wife, prepare her loins. Behold, a man-child cometh forth. I went, where's my church? I don't know who y'all went. He bringeth out from the loins of your woman. Look at me, son. God is not a liar. You are his prophet. And he will be faithful to you. And you will break the curse to the glory of God. Listen, hush. Your father's in jail so you wouldn't have to be. Your purpose, bris no hofile, is to break prison doors. And your son will be a prince that sets captives free. And a sign to you will be this, scream prophesy. He will be articulate in math. He'll love numerics and algebra. He'll exceed and excel. This is the heritage of those that love the Lord. Get rid of the leeches, son. And move to your next level. Say, so be it. So be it. Um, <laughs> Y'all mess me up. Okay. The Philistines heard that David was anointed. Say, I'm anointed. I'm almost done. Say, I'm anointed. Say, I'm anointed. Say, I'm anointed. Teach. Say, I'm anointed. I want you, Jalen, to come to a resolve. You ain't rejected, you're anointed. You're not afraid, you're anointed. You're not nervous, you're anointed. You ain't even as broken as you think. Ashley, baby, you've been anointed. My testimony, sweet sugar, is my anointing frustrates me. I don't always like it. You know, when it's around y'all, it's fun. <laughs> but there are other times where it costs, it matters. I don't know, Pastor Rhonda, if people understand what the anointing does to a life. They think it's okay when oil comes on the head and drips and you get up like, yay, yay, yay. What happened Monday? What does it do Tuesday? How does it impact you Wednesday afternoon? Cope with the anointing. A part of what I've been assigned by God to do, Ben, is to teach people to guard the anointing. The, the official action of God on your life, on your head, the anointing. Now, when you try to hide the anointing, listen to me, Lenise, calamity comes. Loose. When, 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 when the oil, when, when, <laughs> pray for me. When the oil is on your head, there are certain, you need to know this. When you become a husband in the will of God with nothing to prove, 
He anoints you for that house. You, not me, become that priest. You make those decisions and set those parameters and make that covenant with God. You need to be anointed to be a husband. Good God from Zion. You need to be anointed to be a wife. Yeah. Pastor Josh. How many helpers around here don't have the Holy Ghost? How you a help meet without the helper? If that woman don't speak in tongues, I don't want none. Put those hands together for tongue talking women. Tyron, help me, son. I said clap those hands for women with the Holy Ghost. I don't care if you cook or not. Can you pray? And if Bay don't pray, Bay can't stay. I got to help me. Lord have mercy. Now, I got a couple of more verses to read to you, Putin, but I, I, I can I testify. When I wake up at 4.30 in the morning and I roll over on my face, my wife does not get insecure. She does not reach over and say, where are you going? Because I'm not her all in all. I'm not her Lord and Savior. I am her zaddy, but I'm not her daddy. And when I go to the garage to pray, what does she do? Stay out there, baby, until you get a breakthrough. Stay out there until you've heard from heaven. Stay out there until you know where to put this money. Stay out there until you change another decimal. Lift your hands and say, I receive a real help me. Say, I receive the right spouse. Say, I claim my ministry mate. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Elder Deborah in verse 8. I'm almost done. You'll get some food. The Philistines heard David was anointing. Tell a Pharaoh, you are God's sin. Darrell Hush, listen. Your anointing has a sound. When you are anointed, there is a frequency that goes out to your enemies. Your attack may not be because of your disobedience. Maybe your adversity is because of what just hits your head. What if you're going through because of what's right? We often equate what we're going through to what we did wrong. My testimony is when I did it right, I still got hit. And when I obeyed, I still got hit. And when I said yes, I still got hit. But the good news is, the anointing makes you unkillable. Oh, they don't believe me. Hey, I said the anointing means you can't be destroyed. Let, let me prove it. Jasmine, you a bad woman. You a bad woman. Don't you ever let nobody tell you otherwise. You a bad woman. Women lose their minds having to live through what you have. You are a bad woman. You've won the medal of the Olympics of life. I'm proud of you. Let me stay in my office. When you have a, a, a lamb, a sheep, in Psalms 23, the word is poimen. It's P-O-I-M-E-N. Scream teach. It's what this man is. Poyman, shepherd, it means the Lord is my pastor. In, 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 in a Psalms 23, when David writes about that, he says, the Lord is my shepherd or the Lord is my pastor. Pay attention Tuesday because I've got a word. We don't understand the power of a pastor. It is the provision of God for purpose. When the Lord assigns a shepherd to you, it's not because y'all have similar personalities. When the Lord assigns a shepherd to you, he don't even ask your permission. Woe unto you that submit to who you agree with. You don't have the right to choose your leader. Israel was baptized into Moses. There was a history with God. The Lord is my shepherd. I not. So I went to look it up 
right? And I got dogs. You got a dog? No. The Lord just told me something about you and a pet. Let it be. Um, <laughs> ain't that a mess? I need to connect with you. My wife and I just became CEO of an insurance company. And I know that you're in that business. So to make sure we're doing it right, we need to talk to you. Baby, this is my daughter-in-law's father. He also owns insurance companies. Connect so I can make money. <laughs> Say so be it. When you have a lamb, or, or what happened is they would anoint the lambs. I show you a mystery. Why does a sheep need to be anointed? I'm not even at my point. We're going to shout again, because I want to. Y'all should have came to church during a pandemic. Anyway, um, you had to anoint the sheep. The sheep needed to be anointed. Tierra wasn't a shepherd. Sometimes we think the shepherd needs the oil. It's the sheep that needs the oil. The shepherd needs the staff. The shepherd needs the rod. And, and, and because sheep are blind, scream preach. They don't always know how to make out what's before them. So if you are a sheep, a part of what it means is you won't know the difference between a couch and a rock. Or a rock and water. Your vision is blurry by design. Your vision is blurry by design. Hey, I don't care that you're a seer. Don't nobody care about your dreams and your vision and your discernment? God will anoint you to be blurry. He will anoint you to be blurry. I feel the Holy Ghost. He will anoint you to have moments of confusion. And y'all think because God is not the author of confusion that he don't use it. Your praise catalyzes confusion. When you praise God, he authorizes confusion in the camp of the enemy. Therefore, Elder Deborah, confusion when in the hand of God brings clarity to his children. Without confusion, you'll never be clear. Without ambiguity, you'll never be focused. And so when you're dealing with this concept, I'm going to get to my word. When I get to my voice, my verse, we're going to shout, okay? When you're following a shepherd, the shepherding of God. You know why I dance today, Pastor Janice? The man shepherded me. He came to see about me. He said, hey, boy, get up from here. You've got work to do. Why are you crying? Wake up. He sounded like my natural father. Get up for I punch you. And I rose and I obeyed. Here's the crazy part. You're not getting these glasses back. Here's a, <laughs> when I anoint a, a, a sheep like this, you know why they did it? Because without the oil, there would be insects. Say teach. teach. And when you were a sheep, you would have constant infestation of insects. Wow. There would be mosquitoes and bees and things that would get in your nose. Yeah. The oil was for the head, but it would cover the nose. Yeah. Yeah. Your nose is for discernment. Yes. Yeah. In the Bible, the nose is for detection and discernment. I can smell a devil. <laughs> and so when you anoint a sheep, if the sheep was not anointed, Deuter, if something set up in its nasal passages or its brain, say teach, it would kill himself. It would literally bang his head on the ground from the frustration of the network that set up in his nostrils. Of the infestation that's set up in his ability to discern. So rather than live with that, they would bash their heads on the ground. So the shepherd said, I'm going to put oil on you. And, and if I put oil on you, the mosquitoes can't stay. There is a fragrant oil that's going to prevent the infestation. You will not kill yourself because of what tries to make its home in you. <laughs> Lift your hands and say, honey, I'm anointed. <laughs> so you had to anoint the sheep if they were to follow. Here's the worst part. Choose whichever one is yours. Uh, sometimes the shepherd had to break the leg of the sheep. On a shepherd's rod, I'm almost at my verse, there's a hook. 
The hook was not to punish, and the hook was not to pierce. The hook was to catch. So that if by any chance you fell victim to your sheepness and your sheep-like behavior, your sheep-like reactions, because here's the truth. Sometimes your sheepness shows up as a reflex. You weren't intending to act like a sheep. You weren't intending to speak like one, but it's natural to you to be blind. So the Lord gives a hook. Lift your hands and say, thank God for a hook. Have you ever almost did something? <laughs> Committed to something? Did you almost buy a ring? Choose a job, move to a city, and then the hook came? Now, 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 sometimes, Monty, the hook hurts because it's abrasive. It, it, you be walking, having your jolly good time. I've been working on the railroads. And the hook in the hand of God pulls you back. Lift your hands. Say, Lord, thank you for my leash. Peggy, they won't help me, son. I, I want 20 of you to thank the Lord for a short leash. Thank you that I did not marry who I thought I was going to. Thank you that I didn't move where I thought I wanted to. Thank you that I didn't waste that money on that degree. Thank you that my fiance is where he needed to be. She needed to be. I left him because of the hook. Put those hands together for a short leash. I don't, I don't envy, hey near, I don't envy people with a long leash. Because I don't need the scenic route. I need the instruction of God. Teach me to number my days so that I may apply my heart to wisdom. I prophesy the leash, wow, the leash of the Lord on you. Some of you are asking for the leadership of the Lord, but what you need is his leash. You, you need that Mufasa moment. Simba, everything the light touches is ours, but don't go over there. Do you feel punished when the Lord says, don't go over there? Do you feel corrected when he says, that's the elephant graveyard and you're a prince? You don't belong among the dead. <laughs> Do you feel attacked when the Lord restricts you? But even his love is manifest in his restriction. Y'all are so damaged and traumatized and broken that you don't know how to appreciate. Can I stay in my office? The restriction of the Lord. You love his permission. You love his open door. You shout and dance over his yes. You hate that no. You can't stand that not yet. You can't stand that not there. The leash of God is his protection. But when you don't have the right perspective about who he is to you, watch me, you feel punished by his pace. I wonder if you think he's not moving quick enough. You won't say, man. It's okay. I wonder if you think he's taking his time. But the truth is, he does not consider the calendar of man. Lift your hands and say, change of plans. Corey, they won't help me with your yellow self. Because he's so yellow. I hate when he wears light colors. Because he be blended like with his shirts. The pace of God, the pace of God, the pace of God. I'm getting to my verse in a minute, but I want you to appreciate his pace. Jalen, when you go home, make a graphic, say, I appreciate his pace. There's no such thing as him taking too long. There's no such thing as him being too slow. If God has decided that this is his pace, I'm going to trust the man that designed time. I'm going to trust the hand that holds time. And I'm not going to get my, mad that his timing ain't mine. Repeat after me like I'm coaching you. Say, I resolve, I resolve that, his that his timing is not mine. He's shown you some things that's not for now. He's revealed some things that's not for now.
Well, why you? You know what's funny? Apostle Monique, I'm going to use you for a demonstration in a minute. You and your wonderful husband. Um, you know what's awful? I have a bad habit, Quez, of saying, hey, let me, I, I need to talk to you. And then I wait like a month. <laughs> and what happens <laughs> when people have like anxiety issues or nervous issues, they be like, so it's like, I can't even say hello to them next time without them being like. <laughs> so you may in your heart be like, well, if it's not now, why did he show me? If it's not now, why did he tell me? Can I stay in my office? If it's not now, why did I dream it? If it's not now, why did they prophesy it? It's not now because your faith ain't right. So, so I show it to you to grow you into it. Just because I said it now, don't mean I'm doing it now. But it takes worship and praise to love him, even if he does it later. Lift your hands and say, do it later, do it later, do it later. Oh, y'all some punks. Say, do it later, do it later. You ain't ready to be a husband yet. Say, do it later. You barely wash your laundry, woman. You ain't ready to be a wife. Say, do it later. You not a submitted daughter. How dare you try to be a mother? Say, do it later. We have to know that the later of God is just as important as the now of God. And sometimes what you think, they don't want this evangelist. Preach this, baby. One day you're going to be an amazing pastor. I said what I said. You will lead God's people into deliverance and you will inherit the mantle of your grandmother. Who they think is the successor is not. Behold, Ishmael has taken upon the mantle of Apostle Yancey and yet one is before me that is her Elisha. The days come, saith God, where miracles will be born from your mouth. You will talk to kidneys and talk to hearts and talk to organs and you will not apologize. I will live to see the day where you will walk in the sent one's anointing. <laughs> I don't want to be messy, so I'm going to save some of that word. Mama, you text it to her. But David said, I've excelled my teachers. Put those hands together. Amen. <laughs> Sorry. It's, 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 it's about the later of God. Okay, hold on. Okay. Philist the Philistines heard that David was anointed king over all of Israel. This is verse 8 of 1 Chronicles 14. We're going to pray this this week. All the Philistines went up to seek David. David heard of it and went out against them. Lift your hands. Repeat after me like you in your bathroom. Say ready or not. Ready or not. Here, I come. Here I come. Get ready to show yourself to Ahab. Get ready to reveal what God's been working on in you. Get ready for your private devotion to become public display. What God has been teaching you in the closet is for the mountain. He never teaches you for the closet for the closet. He teaches you in the closet for the mountains. You're getting ready to go to the top of something. You have been anointed for the top. You've been taken to the top. But you've got to go out among them. Say, I receive that. Verse 11 says, I'm almost done. So they came, no, I'm sorry, 10. And David... Go to 10, hurry up, because y'all not being obedient. And David, Leslie, David inquired. When you see biblical inquiry, what is the heart's way, it's the heart's way of admitting, I don't know what I'm doing. Don't ever again, Kene, follow God in assumption. Ask him the right question. Do you realize, and not, I know y'all, right? So when we're corrected, when we're chastised, when we're reproved, we love to hide behind misunderstanding. I'm misunderstood. 
I'm misunderstood. Do you know God is the most misunderstood? That's because people judge him and don't ask. They label him, but don't ask. This is why prayer is important. Let me stay in my office. The, the, the commission to ask, seek, and knock is Jehovah's way of saying people don't know what I want because they don't ask. Ask of me, Psalms 2.8, and I will give you the nations. Maybe the nations have not been lent because he can't find a people that's willing to ask. Asking is a part of our heritage. You've got to have courage to ask. Praise your name. You've got to have humility to ask. You've got to have bravery to ask. I'm not just an intercessor. I'm a professional asker. I know how to position myself before the throne and ask. So he says, ask. There, there, there is an ask level, A-S-K, for those of you that are carnal. David inquired of God. Here was the name of my message, allegedly, supposedly, before we shouted and danced. Shall I go up? I was going to preach a message called, Shall I Go Up? I'm looking in the face of a lot of you that's wondering within yourself, is it time to go up? Am I ready for my ascent? Is this the Lord leading me to a new level? Shall I go up? Put your hand on your chest. Say, I believe it's time to go up. Dr. Sit, they didn't hear me. They had Chuck E. Cheese. Lift your hands and say, I believe it's time to leave this level. <laughs> Prophetess Katie, pray me through here. Shall I go up against the Philistines? I'm done. But going up will present a new barrier. It won't be that going up is easy. Don't be dumb. Going up will present a new challenge, and going up will present a new obstacle. Just because you're on a new level don't mean that the devil is gone. It's going to get more complicated. I'm working in here. More sophisticated, the battle gets complex. Shall I go up, and will you deliver them into my hand? Look at what the Lord said. I'll preach it next week. The Lord said to him, Go up. What a word. What a decree. I want you to lift your hands and say, God told me to go up. up. Prophetess Katie, they won't help me. Say, the Lord said to me, go up. Say, I have instructions to go up. The Lord's, hey, the, hey, 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 hey. The Lord said to him, go up, and I will deliver them into your hands. I don't know who this is for, but vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. So they came up, final verse, they came up to Baal Perazim, and David smote them there. You will remember the place, Jeremiah, where you defeat your enemies. In every moment in life where you win a battle, it becomes a memorial. It's not a moment, Joshua. It is to become a memorial. When the Lord causes you to triumph, causes you to win, you mark the space where he showed up. You name the place where he revealed himself. You, you, you say, I was weak and I won. I was scared, but I saw. I was low and he lifted me. And he named that place Jehovah Jireh. Every revelation of God's name is the demarcation of an area where he did something that could not be done by men. So when you say Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah, uh, which there's no J, so it's Yara, but uh, uh, Jehovah Sitkanu and, and all of that, those are geographical locations. They're not just nicknames. God, don't need a nickname. You don't have to go to God and say, hey, boo. 
Hey, papi. <laughs> Reese, I feel like screaming at the top of my lungs. He told Abram, because there is no name higher than mine. I swear by my own name. What he was saying is I'll never not show up. Every battle you have, I'll be there. Every moment you have, I'll be there. Every decision you need to make, I'll be there. Lift your hands and say, he's always there. Come on, lift your hands to Roe and say, he's always there. Lift your hands to Adonai and say, he's always there. Lift your hands to El Shaddai and say, he's always there. That's the point. He's not just revealing different names because he's schizophrenic. <laughs> the names are for you. He knows who he is. So if he reveals to you different names, it's because of the places you're in, the moments you're in. You are entitled to a moment, Pastor Janice. You can't make that moment a memorial. Have a bad day. Why won't you help me? Have a bad day. Have a bad hour. Be mad. Use two cuss words. Don't use seven. But don't make, listen to me, a memorial out of your moment. Many of you have mishandled moments and made them memorials. How do you know if I made a memorial? If that moment impacted your next decision. If you can't obey, I don't care, I'm cracking in here. If you can't obey because of what you just went through. If you will not yield because of the trauma of your last obedience, it means that there is something about the nature of God that you've not seen. If a giant is standing before you, he's seven foot 12 and you five foot 11, it's not you that's gonna win. It's gonna be Elohim. Yes, and, and, and so that makes sense now when he says, be still and know that I am God. This battle is not yours, Jordan. Help me, grandbaby. This battle is the Lord. Set yourself before what I've said about myself. I've been faithful to you. I've been consistent before you. I've never broken a promise. I'm not your mama or your daddy. I am God. And when there is no word to compare me to or contrast me to, just call me holy. Be be because it encapsulates everything that I am. It means perfect. It means without flaw, without error, without misjudgment, or without mistake, without flaw. I am holy. That's what the angels call him. Holy. 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 Go with me. I left this level and you're still here. Holy. Holy. What are they saying? Perfect. 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 What are they saying? No mistake. No mistake. When they bow, when the creatures and the priests, what are they saying? You do everything right. You're right all the time. You're right when I see it. You're right when I don't. You're right when you say it. Watch me. And you're right when you're silent. You're never not right. Lift your hands and say, holy. It describes the Enneagram of God. I don't care if you're one, six, five, four, eight. He's a holy. And what that means is he's always right. He's never not right. Go up. And I will deliver them into your level, which means, unfortunately, the only way you'll be defeated is if you stay here. You'll only lose the battle if you stay at this level. You have to go up. They came to Belperazim. David smote them there. Then David said, watch this. Josh, receive this. Receive it. God hath broken in upon mine enemies by my hand, like the breaking of waters. Belperazim means God of breakthrough. God of breakthrough. God of breakthrough. Shall I go up? Yes. And when you go up, baby, I will be your God of breakthrough. 
which means that when you go up, you will hit a barrier. Something will come over you, a stigma, a statistic, a story, a, a something. Can I stay in my office? A divorce, a mistake, a sin, a judgment, a failure, a race, a gender. Somebody will try to define you based upon what you've been through. But go up anyway. Someone will say, I was with you when. I saw you when. A teacher will say, you didn't get a good GPA. The GRE will say, you didn't make the score. You, yeah, because you want to get a doctorate, but you've got to wait a year and a half. You're about to have a baby. Okay? Listen to me, sugar. You're about to get pregnant, if you're not already. So you have to wait. Okay? And when you do it, you're going to pass with flying colors. And you will work in social services. You will um, provide food and clothes. And then when you're done with that in five years, you'll teach at the collegiate level. Makes sense to you. I know I'm right. <laughs> when you go up, you will hit a barrier, okay? Hear what I'm about to tell you, and I'm going to pray for you. The barrier is not a bad sign. The barrier is a sign that you've gone up. And he will be to you the God that breaks out. My very first sermon, well, I had one before I got ordained. I preached um, one year before I preached again. My granddaddy told me I wasn't ready. He definitely Eli'd me. <laughs> I went to him, like, I, I, I know I'm called. The Lord walked up to my door and told me, prophesy and preach the gospel. My granddad said, okay, that's nice. Come back. <laughs> Six months made me wait. I thank God that he made me wait. My very first sermon was Micah chapter 2, verse 13. The breaker has gone up before them and has broken up and passed through the, great, the gates. Apostle B, do you remember the name of my sermon? The spirit of the breaker. You are attached to the loins of a man. I only know how to break through. I, I, I could not break through if I didn't want to. It's in my destiny, my DNA. The first thing I said to the body of Christ was breakthrough. And I'm still saying that. Breakthrough, church. There will be barriers, but scream breakthrough. There will be confusion, but breakthrough. There will be issues, but breakthrough. You will lose relationships, but you will have to walk away, but you will have to change your mind, but you will have to give more money, but you will have to sacrifice more time, but breakthrough anyway. Come here, Andrew and Dr. Monique. I'm done. Let's break through. Break through. I don't know nothing. Quez won't talk to me, so I don't know nothing. Break through. You are nothing like any woman in your family. Break through. Because you can be this and that. CEO and wife. <laughs> Founder and help me. President and lover of a king yeah. that's getting ready to be crowned yeah. before America in a way he'd never dreamed. Yeah. Breakthrough, sugar. Breakthrough. <laughs> he needs a woman that'll break through. Breakthrough. And when your daughter comes, <laughs> you'll show her how to not dim herself down and how to pursue her dreams. Look at me, baby. You're in your prime now. The best is before you. Do everything you dare do. And go back and find them journals. And sow in faith. Because the Lord that will come shall come. Why do I see a store? Get ready to own and own and own some more. I bless this marriage. And anything the devil says against it, may his jaw be locked. His larynx be split. The favor of God on you. Scream breakthrough. I want all of you to, I'm done. I want all of you to make, because this has been long. I want all of you to make the decision to break through. Decide it. Discern it. See it. This faithful couple. This beautiful, okay. This, this, this beautiful uh, Aquila and Priscilla. This upgrade couple. They were assigned to this house, 
and assigned to my charge, like it or not. They were called as apostolic associates to what I'm sent to do. The Lord sent them here. Judge your mama. The Lord sent them here. Through closing a church, the Lord sent them here. Through walking away from a following, the Lord sent them here. Through going through the ridicule of people that did not understand, the Lord sent them here. And they're here. Oddly, they both understand chiropractic professionalism. Here is a real story. This man is quiet, full of love, full of wisdom, extraordinarily discerning. Can I be honest with you? Shut your mouth. He turned off my leg. We were in our office, Jordan, and I'm like, yo, after I preach, it's been long, hard. I need, like, some help with my muscles. He said, okay, walk. Now, y'all know I got a weird walk. I'll smack you if you judge me. <laughs> he watched me walk, and he diagnosed me. People can diagnose you by how you walk. You can't hide who you are when you walk. I'm watching your walk. I started walking, and he looked at me and was like, uh, <laughs> you sleep in fetal position. I said, I know you lie. You better not be looking at my bedroom, sir. I don't know what's going on. I've been sleeping this way since I was six. He said, you sleep in fetal position. Something's going on. You're having headaches because something is wrong with your neck. I'm looking at him like I felt violated. I felt seen invaded. He did something on my back, EP. Like, eh, eh, eh. He hit like a pressure point or something. He said, lift your leg. I was like, okay. I couldn't think about enough demons to bind. I was like, is this Jezebel, behemoth, what is this? He turned my leg off. He knew how to operate a muscle that impacted my mobility. I learned from them my muscularity is based on my mobility. And my mobility is directly related to my muscularity. You are only as strong as you can walk. Process through. So they taught me a whole bunch about chiropractic ministry. What I learned that they are therapists, physical therapists, and they got this weird beef. Correct me if, if you want. It's like Tupac and Biggie. Like chiropractors and physical therapists, they both fight each other. So the chiropractors are like, I'm going to get in here and break your bones, crack you, adjust you. The therapist is like, I'm going to fix you. One can crack you and make the adjustment, but the adjustment is not repair. If you change your posture alone and don't get restored, if you make up in your mind, I'm going to just show up to church on time, but you're not healed. If you say, I'm going to obey, and do what's asked of me, but you don't deal with the wound in the heart. You had a chiropractic alignment. You've not seen a therapist. Hmm. One lasts longer than the other. Am I right or am I wrong? One is momentary. If I crack you, rebuke you, you feel the impact immediately. Don't mean you've had therapy. You make an immediate move, an immediate adjustment. Now, now, cool. the first time I laid on a table to get chiropractic, I was scared as Hades, Sheol, Gehenna. You know why? I don't trust people. And so what happened was she lied to me, not them, but she lied to me. She literally said, hey, I'm going to count you to three, and when I do, you're going to hear noise. She got to one and a half because she knew that by the time I got to three, I'd tighten up. So she literally said one. I was like, oh, God. I was uncomfortable, I was uncomfortable, I was uncomfortable. And in prayer, a part of what the Lord taught us this week was you got to be willing to be uncomfortable before him. There will be moments in prayer where you're not going to be comfortable. You're not going to always have Valentine and, and all of that stuff. You will be uncomfortable. Um, let me show you an example. Um, this is going to be funny. Come here, Darrell. You're submitted. Let's go. 
Stop right here. We're going home. Stop. What y'all eating today? I'm not cooking. Boy. I'm going to New York for seven days. No. I ain't frying nothing. Although catfish does sound good. Y'all ain't shouted all morning. I say catfish and y'all got the Holy Ghost. Okay, Apostle Monique and Apostle Andrew, stand by your wife. That is so. The James anointing, the, the call of the elder brother, the, the call of the coach, the call of the authenticating apostle, the verifying apostle. Stop saying, Pastor, it's a lie. It's an apostolic shepherd. Hmm. With a heart that knows seasons and journeys, you are crowned with a ridiculous level of wisdom that you don't give yourself enough credit for. I prophesy over the next year and a half, you will spare the lives of men in this house. You will extend their days. You will speak to their marriages. You will address their homes. You will undergird a new regime, as it were, apostolically. Anyway, uh, sir, thank you. Walk towards the apostles. Move out the way, son. Walk. Okay, go back. Everybody pay attention. Give me another mic. Now, next week I'm going to preach and holler and scream, and y'all better shout or I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Walk again. Stand there. Okay. What would you see? Watch this. What I see is his, his left leg is externally rotated, actually. And he's probably having some back pain on the right side. Um, his posture is where in which he tries to offload weight on his left side and compensate. So a part of his body is compensating for the other. And sometimes he has numbness from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Tingling, possibly. Loss of balance. Fatigue on one side. That's what I see. Go back. Come to me. Stop here. What did you notice? I noticed that you don't keep, that you keep your trunk muscles or your core really tight to try to protect yourself. It's like you're trying to overguard for what your pelvis won't allow you to do. And so there is, like my husband said, um, a pain in the lower back and even like in the tailbone uh, when you sit down and it's difficult for you to sit for a very long period of time. I see you kind of like shifting in your chair sometimes needing to get up and kind of stretch your legs because like my husband said of the numbness and tingling that runs down your legs. Turn around, Darrell. Back up. Sometimes you got to back up. Sometimes you got to retrace last steps. And, and, and Tracy, hear me, sugar, sometimes backing up is progress. We often think that moving forward is the only way to progress. Sometimes you got to go back and say, where did I miss you? Where did I get it off or wrong? Lord, help me back up. Sometimes it takes backing up to heal. All right, um, Apostle Andrew, fix him. Turn something off. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I love my church. They don't do this everywhere. Hey, where you go to church and get a massage? Are you a member here? Okay, repent. Because there's a lot more that you should be doing. You know you should be more submitted. We need you here. And yet, you're scared to commit because of what you perceive about the social relationships. Skip these people. Serve. Say, I receive. Let's go. Oh, I love this. 
Apostle, what'd you just do to him? What'd you do? I just turned his, I turned his back muscles Turn off. Turn that mic on. I just basically turned his back muscles off and then. You did what? <laughs> <laughs> through compression on certain spots. Stop. Pressure activates the muscle. Pressure turns the muscle on and off. Don't you ever again run from the pressure. You need the pressure. You don't know you do, but you need it. Pressure makes you stronger. Let's go. What else did you do? Now, because I'm low-key freaky, ask my wife. Quiz. I asked Apostle Andrew to teach me how to do that. Teach, I said, I may be able to use that skill. That's amazing. <laughs> Turn it up a little bit. Anyway, keep going. So I gave him instruction. What'd you I, do? I gave him instruction to What'd do what you the do? body is supposed to be but able Because to you've do. got to learn to be healed. Come on, just partner with me with this. Now, now in the old school church, the preacher would preach and somebody else would read their scriptures. This is that same version. <laughs> you've got to learn to be healed. There is an ignorance with regard to how the healed you looks. So if you don't value instruction, you'll never walk in healing. Keep going. And so he followed the instruction. And then he didn't see what he thought he should see. He couldn't pick his legs up. He Is that true? Pick his leg up. Your leg went out? I know you lied. So he turned your leg off. Did you try to lift it? Be honest. This ain't no crusade, healing crusade. Be honest. So he turned it off. And you honestly couldn't lift it. Is that why you look scared? Listen. Fear is the normal reaction when you don't know what to do. Fear is the normal response when you can't move the same way. When things don't work the way they used to. When things don't move like they used to. When it don't go as high as what you're accustomed to. But just because you're not used to it don't mean God ain't doing it. Get ready to experience something that you're not used to. Keep going. And so then I gave him instruction to walk away because I wanted to see if he was back in alignment. Sometimes you've got to walk away in order to test if you're healed for real. Sometimes the ultimate test of healing is your willingness to walk away because it's what you're willing to walk away from that'll determine what you can walk into and if you're not willing to walk away you're going to miss out on everything God got for you in your healing season in your restoration season but you you, you got okay I'm going to save it because something's happening you, you got to be willing to walk you got to be willing to walk it's the only way we'll test it that didn't come by stethoscope that didn't come by x-ray that didn't come by gi it came from walking it out lift your hands and say walk it out it's gonna be hard but you got to walk it out it's gonna be confusing but you better walk it out grow up and walk it out if you walk it out you'll come out of doubt you'll come out of fear intimidation inferiority comparison abuse self-hatred regret neglect just walk this thing it's not vacation it's therapy walk back son come on Stop. Apostle Monique, make another observation. Looks like your pain has decreased tremendously and you're starting to feel a little bit more comfortable now in the uh, freedom and the liberty that you have in your gait pattern. Listen, heal again. Heal some more. It's okay to get a second opinion. It's okay to heal, hurt, and heal again don't get drained because you got some more healing to do 
don't get discouraged because it looks like you're always trying to heal. The only people that don't need to heal, oh, we about to worship. The only people that don't need to heal are those that ain't walking. If you're walking, you got to worship so you can heal. If you're walking, you got to keep those hands lifted. And as long as your hands are lifted, you will never ever lose again. I prophesy victory to the lifted hand. Clarity to the lifted hand. Provision to the lifted hand. Give me about 30 seconds of a love song from your heart to his mouth. Go ahead. From your heart to his ears. Lord, I love you. I'm walking it out. I'm afraid, but I'm walking it out. I don't know what's next, but I'm walking it out. And may my walking be worship. Come on through here. May my walking be received as oh yeah, as an offering. I'm walking. Come on, worship, 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 worship. I can hear you. You too quiet. All the hell you've been through, worship it. All the warfare you've been through. Worship him. Shall I go up? Shall I go up? Shall I go up? Lord, if I go up, will you deliver them into my hands? Surely you will pursue, you will overtake. And you will recover all. Honey, let's go up. Lift your hands and say, I'm going all the way up. I'm going all the way the Lord, The Lord says to tell y'all right before we dismiss. He's delivering you from soul ties. Bring it down so they can hear me. Because they're going to get home, tie, and swear that they missed this portion of the warning. You got about 30 days to rid yourself of soul ties. And before you act like this ain't for you, because you're not in an entanglement, soul ties ain't always to people. <laughs> you could have a soul tied to a place, a soul tied to an idea. You can have a soul tied to an organization. You can have a soul tie to a definition. You can have a soul tied to a plan. But I prophesy a change of plans. And he's untying your heart. Lord, let every knot, every tie, I'm mad at y'all, man. Y'all won't let me preach. I'll do it next week. Let me prophesy, though. Your heart is being untied. You, you, you know what it is to have your hands loosed, but you've not experienced the untying of God at the heart level, the rope on what a woman is, the rope on what marriage is, the, the rope on when marriage should be the rope on how much money I should make, the rope on who accepts me. The, the, let the tie, the soul tie to every illegal covenant, people, places, the anointing is here. Ideas, organizations, places, labels, titles, ex, whoa, 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 expectation, whoa, whoa. Expect some of you are tied by people's expectation of you. I hear God. Some of you are tied to people's expectations of you, and you're afraid that if you don't meet the expectation, that they'll walk away. Throw your hands up and say, I'm going up anyway, whether they're here or not, whether they understand or not, whether they agree or not, whether they sow or not. Whether they call or not, I'm going up. Lift your hands and scream anyway. The fire of God on every rope, staple, cohesive binding uh -huh, around your heart. The vials around them, the thoughts, the memories around them.
God's going to use the rest of this month to deliver you. Oh, I love that. He's going to deliver you deep. His love will deliver you. His, his passion will deliver you. He's going to deliver you. You ready for this, Pookie? From you. Because you thought your enemy was external. And you thought that the enemies that are outside of you one of the strongest problems you got. Your problem is you. And you got a soul tie with you. Because when I say that, they're like, I ain't shacking. No, yes, you are. Because you're afraid to go into covenant with the new you. And, and the new season, you're afraid. You're in rebellion. Because the old you is comfortable. Dysfunction feels good. But when the Lord interrupts and starts messing stuff up and changing plans and sometimes you look at your life and it's in pieces. How the heck did I end up with him? With her? <laughs> there? Some of you are looking at me like, I don't even like Chicago. Why the heck am I here? I'm looking at about 20 of you. I'm not going to expose you. I'm Samuel, so I can do it. But I see palm trees around a lot of you. You like, uh, I was supposed to be in Florida. A lie! You're supposed to be in the will of God. And, and, and when you're in the will of God, the weather don't matter. When you're in the will of God, it don't matter how much money you're making. And when you're in the will of God, that's the safest place. Find his will. If you need wisdom, find his will. If you need partnership, find his will. Find his will. And the will of God, Deuter, learn this with me. It's the secret to provision. I don't have what I have because I'm the smartest person in the world. I ain't nothing. I'm, I'm just as jacked up as everybody else. I learned how to find my way to his will. Ask me how. Worship is my map. My cry is my compass. When I don't know what to do, I have one, one reaction. My sons will tell you, if I'm confused, I'm going to worship. If I'm afraid, I'm going to worship. If I don't know what to do, I'll find a song somewhere in my heart. I'll express myself to him. And when I'm up, I get the victory. I win. He crowns me. He clothes me because I worship. One last time. And this one is not for the faint at heart. But one last time for those that's willing to risk it all. One last time for those that are like, yo, I've already been through a lot. I ain't got nothing else to lose. As long as you worship, son, you'll win.